So it's been a few years since I started incorporating the Armor Tool Mobile Workbench into my workflow and I absolutely love it because it's very sturdy and it's mobility of course. However, whenever I roll it into the center of my shop and do a project on top of it, I need a lot of tools or accessories. So what ends up happening is the top gets cluttered and then I have less space to actually work on it. So this week I took the Armor Tool Workbench and then just personalized it a little bit to hold all of the accessories I need to actually build on it. These accessories included a few drawers for tucking things away, such as safety glasses or tape measures, a bottom shelf that can store the tools as well as the self-adjusting armored tool clamps that go in the holes on the top, then also some busty quick clamp storage, which I always have a few different sizes on hand, a few extra batteries for my main tools, two drill holsters, two speed squares, a mallet, sanding block, and then of course wood glue. I probably left something off, but this at least gets me going. Let me show you how I did it. You can see on my current workbench that I already added a few sheets of scrap plywood to create a bottom shelf, therefore giving me some storage area. However, by placing the wood on the bottom, I'm creating a built-in shelf by having the lip of the structures creating a sidewall. However, I only wanted to treat half of this as a regular shelf. I wanted to use the other half to store the bench dog clamps. And I thought the easiest way to do this was to drill holes for the stems of the clamps to stab into. Since the top of the workbench conveniently has a hole pattern already laid out, I came up with a few jigs to place my shelf piece on the top so that I could go to the underside and transfer the hole location with a pencil. However, instead of drilling upwards, because this is gonna be a lot of holes, I flipped the workbench over, crawled inside, and then used a Forstner bit of the same size to punch through. Of course on this, you can drill as many or as few holes as possible, or you can leave it all as a standard shelf. Once I was done drilling all the holes, I clamped it to the bottom side of the shelf and then screwed it into place. Now I have plenty of space to store these clamps where they're not gonna just be piled on top of one another and they're gonna be easily accessible. With that in place, I moved over to the side of the workbench. Now it's worth noting that I'm using only scrap wood for this project. It's a great one to use up all of those scrap bits that you can't make yourself throw away. I cut a piece of three quarter inch ply to size and filled in the size just by simply screwing it in. There's already pre-drilled holes for you. And over on this side, I really wanted a place to store my longer Bessie quick clamps as they're my most commonly used ones. <laughs> and I actually used two Bessie clamps in order to clamp on the block of wood. And if you line up the jaws of the clamp to your piece of wood, then you can use that to go to the back side and know where to drill your screws in to attach it. And this gives me a very simple shelf to store all of my Bessie clamps, which I always have on hand. I don't know if you know, but Bessie recently redesigned their trigger clamps and I absolutely love the new robust design. They not only can still be used with one hand, but they can also clamp up to 600 pounds, which is incredible. I personally also love the longer footprint they've given them. Moving right up above that, I incorporated some spare battery storage. I am in love with this new product called Stealth Mounts. They're holders for batteries. They don't actually charge the batteries, but they do organize them and give you a clip in place so that they don't just fall off and get damaged. I now have these all over the shop. And so whenever I'm working and my battery goes dead, I can very quickly reach down and grab a new one. So what I did is incorporated a few of the brands that I use the batteries most often. They're dead simple to attach with just three screws each and then the battery clips right into place. I not only have these on my workbench, but also on my lumber rack, my miter saw, really anywhere I'm using batteries. And it's worth noting that the clips even have a feature that you can put onto a tool belt. I did start off putting this on a French cleat. However, whenever I would lift up on the batteries, it would sometimes lift the entire attachment. So I took off the French cleat and just screwed it permanently into the back. All right, speed square holsters. I originally built these whenever I was doing my plywood workbench and I have one on every single corner so that a speed square is always available. So on this one, I went ahead and incorporated two more, one on each corner opposite of each other. After using glue and brad nails to build the holsters themselves, I then clamped it onto my workbench and then pre-drilled and used a few screws to attach it. And I think that's it for one of the sides, so let's go ahead and move on to the front. I thought a shallow drawer would be nice to hold safety glasses and tape measures and maybe even some pencils or glue brushes. So I incorporated one on the top right. I actually made the drawer shallow enough to still utilize the clamps on the top without hitting it. However, once I populate it full of stuff, then it kind of becomes a problem. To avoid this, you can scrap the drawer completely on yours or you can simply pull it out before utilizing a clamp on the top. 
I would much rather have the drawer for some of the simple storage. And then inside to organize all of my simple little things, I'm using the lock -Align drawer organization system from Rockler. This is an incredibly flexible system for any drawer in the shop. I already utilize it over in my toolbox. They make a lot of trays that you can store miscellaneous items and dividers for those trays to separate things further. Bit storage, router bit storage, and a lot of other accessories to keep things functional. The drawer is very simple construction with wood glue and brad nails. Then I made a T that would go up and under the workbench and rest on the side flange of that apron. After getting it set to its width, I used a few sliders to insert the drawer. After getting the body of the drawer pushed in, then I came back and made the face so that it would cover up the side divider. Okay, moving over to the other side, I repeated the process by cutting a scrap piece of wood to enclose the side completely. And it's over here that I really wanted to store my two drills. It's pretty standard that I'm always gonna have two drills on me. Something for a pre-drill and then one with a bit in it. I grabbed a piece of wood and then used a jigsaw to cut out a few U shapes. And then I used my spindle sander just to refine it a little bit and make it smooth. And you can see on this side piece that I have a cutout made custom for the length of my drills. So while I do have plans that you can use for everything on this workbench, before making this, I would decide which drills you typically have on hand so that you can get the hole to its exact size. Then to attach this, I used some wood glue and screws along the back. And now I have two places that I can very quickly not only store the drills, but also grab them when needed. Something else I always have on hand when doing projects is a variety of wood glue. So on the bottom here, I decided to utilize this space for storing the different bottles. It's a very simple caddy that can store a huge variety of not only the round, but also the, um, I guess they're called rectangular, rectangle bottles. And this is mounted far enough below the drills to not interfere when pulling them in and out. This next one is a mallet holder and it can really be done anywhere since there's so many holes pre-made for you. I grabbed a quarter inch bit and enlarged one slightly so that I can use some hardware to lock down onto the hole and then have a very simple mallet holder. Then sticking along the easy lines, I grabbed a scrap piece of wood slightly larger than a sanding block. I drilled in a few pocket holes using my Armor Tool self-adjusting pocket hole jig and then attached it right next to my drill holders. Then this just gives me a very easy shelf for the sanding block to be placed onto. Then moving on to something that wasn't as easy, but it's still doable. I wanted to add a drawer to the very bottom which looking back on it, you can completely add this up front so that you don't have to crawl underneath later on. After drilling in a few pocket holes, I used screws to attach it to the bottom side on not only the far right, but also the far left. Because on this one, I didn't want to add sliders. I just wanted to add a shelf for a drawer to sit on and move in and out. To attach the bottom, there was no way that I could get a tool underneath it. So I just flipped the workbench on its face and then glued and used brad nails to secure it. This is also only half of a drawer because on the back side, I really want to incorporate some hardware storage. Last year, I did some hardware storage in these little plastic containers that fit into the stud of my wall. And of course, while doing projects, I always have a few of them on the workbench. So I utilized this bottom space to make holders that could hold four of them. It's just a very simple shelving system. And I know a lot of you probably wouldn't want them at the very bottom where you're not going to be able to see them. But keep in mind that you can move this system anywhere. So if you like the idea of the hardware storage, keep in mind that you could very easily move them up on the workbench. The very last thing that I really wanted to incorporate was more clamp storage, but this time for the smaller sizes of Bessie Quick Clamps. I probably utilized the longest size the most, but I still utilize these smaller sizes frequently enough to have them on hand. So I created another divider wall and then attached a chunk of wood to the bottom to create a lip. Then I attached that to the workbench. And now my longer clamps can be stored along the side and then the shorter clamps can be stored all along the back. And I think that's it. Now, just for fun, I was really curious about how much weight I would be adding to the workbench. So before even getting started, I used my crane and a digital fish scale to weigh the workbench with nothing on it. So 104 pounds, fully loaded down, but the original measurement wasn't with all of the tools on it. So let's take this off. Okay, so 43 and a half, so I added 43 and a half pounds of accessories, so that's 69 and a half pounds of tools. Not that it really matters, it's just kind of fun to know. With it fully loaded down, I've added over 100 pounds. This thing still rolls and moves effortlessly. 
I could very easily take off the lock on the casters and push it not only straight, but also throw it around in a circle. And as you can see, nothing falls off. Of course, if you have an armor tool workbench, then this is the easy route. But keep in mind that all of these add-ons can really be placed anywhere. I have a lot of these features on my plywood workbench. I have a lot of them not even on a workbench, but around my shop. So don't think that you can apply any of these storage solutions if you don't have this one specific workbench. But I do highly recommend this workbench. I actually have two of them. I find them so convenient. On that note, I also have a set of plans for all of the add-ons if you would like that. And I'll see you on the next one. I want to say a big thank you to this video sponsor, which is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics including illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing, and more. Absolutely everybody can learn with Skillshare. From beginners, dabblers, pros, and masters, I have personally found so much value within their learning community. In the past, Skillshare classes have taught me about different subjects like dialing in my SEO, business analytics, and even video skills. Currently, I'm taking the Real Productivity class from Thomas Frank on how to build habits that last. Thomas is guiding me to build habits that turn into strong, long-lasting routines, which will help me make progress on my long-term goals. And I have a lot. Because Skillshare is sponsoring this video, you can click the link in the description to get two months of premium membership and explore your creativity. After that, it's very affordable with an annual subscription of less than $10 a month. Members get unlimited access to thousands of inspiring classes with hands-on projects and feedback from a community of millions. I recommend the premium membership as it gives you complete unlimited access to all classes. Make 2020 a year where you explore new skills and get lost in the creativity of Skillshare online classes.